Hello, Math 8 students. This is Open Up Resources, Unit 2, Lesson 5, More Dilations. To get started, we have this fancy diagram, and we have the directions. All of these triangles are dilations of triangle D. So here's D. All of them are dilations of triangle D, which means this right here. This is our pre-image, or in other words, this is the original figure. Yes, Cambry. Knowing that this is the original and all of these are dilations, let's continue. The dilations all use the same center, P. Let's find P. There it is. All of these are dilations of D using that same center, P. So here's something that I think is interesting. Look at D, our original triangle. Do you see this point here at the top? Do you see an E? It's a dilated one. And look at that same point. And this point. And this point, what do you see about all of these points? They are, ooh, I heard, I think I heard the word. Did you say collinear? You should have said collinear. That was a word we had in yesterday's lesson. They're all on the same line. They're all on the same line that goes back to P. And we could do the same thing down here. Let's look at the bottom one. And the bottom one here. And the bottom one here. And even the bottom one here in A. And what do we notice about all of those? They're all on the same line. They're all collinear going back to P. This one, my technology without fail has never been able to make this line. Look at, watch, watch. I'm getting closer, closer, and then it jumps. See that? Closer, closer, and jumps. I don't know why. In all of my attempts, it never, ever works, but that's going to have to be close enough. And you guys can see that even though my own line, which doesn't work, you can see that the line that's drawn, it goes through all of those middle points and it goes all the way back to P, right? So the dilations all use that same center P, but they have different scale factors. What do triangles A, B, and C all have in common? Again, here's the original D, here's A, B, and C. What do A, B, and C all have in common? And what do E, F, and G all have in common? Discuss with your groups. We're going to pause the recording as students discuss. Ready, set, go. Okay. What do A, B, and C all have in common? A, B, and C, what do they all have in common? There's not enough hands. Thank you. Miley. They're all smaller. What do E, F, and G all have in common? Cheyenne. They're all the same. What do you mean they're all the same? Or they're all the middle of the sizes? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so all of these ones are larger than that one that's there in the middle, right? So all of these ones are larger. Brig, is that what you're going to say? Okay, so with that in mind, let's continue the discussion. What does that tell us about the different scale factors that are used? Who paid attention yesterday is what I'm really asking. What does that tell us about the different scale factors used? Miley, back to you. Give up? Okay, keep going. Okay, yeah, so A is a different size than B is a different size than C, so all of those would have different scale factors. That is correct. I see students who are off task. Eyes on the screen. The question we're answering or we should be discussing is, what does this, meaning these ones are smaller and these ones are larger, what does that tell us about the scale factors that are used? You had those practice problems yesterday where you had to identify scale factors, Cambry. So what does that tell us? Brig, you want to give it a shot? Yeah, they are dilations, though. That's what it tells us. They are dilations. What we're wanting is what does it tell us about the scale factor? And this is where you should have yesterday's assignment out. We need to review. Go back to the first page. It's almost like I knew this was going to happen, right? Almost like I had this already planted here in the slides because I knew you were going to need this reminder. I am basically a wizard, yes. A wizard surrounded by a bunch of muggles. And this is what happens. <laughs> That's probably why the technology isn't working, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Voices off. 
The scale factor describes the size change from the original figure to the image. So what I'm asking is, how is this size changing? Remember, we use the letter R. The dilation is an enlargement if the scale factor is greater than 1. Hey, wait a second. You said all of these ones were larger. What does that tell us about the scale factor then? Miley, it's a bigger number. Specifically, it is greater than 1. You should write that down. Remember how it says we use R for scale factor? That's a lot of words. I'm a lazy mathematician, so I instead am going to say R, the scale factor, is greater than 1. Let's keep reading from yesterday's lesson. And it is a reduction if the scale factor is between 0 and 1. Hey, wait a minute. I have these three where they all got smaller. Those are reductions. What do I know about the scale factor of A, B, and C? Go back and discuss with your groups. We just barely highlighted the answer. So if you have been paying attention, you should be able to have a discussion at your tables. Do that now. Ready, set, go. What do we know about the scale factor of A, B, and C? Yes, Alexi. It's less than 1. Exactly. These all got smaller, so the scale factor is less than 1. And again, I'm a lazy mathematician, so I'm going to use symbols to say the same thing. Scale factor is R. And R is less than one. Fun fact, it would also have to be bigger than zero. We don't go into the negatives. Yes, Katie. Yes, but I have to do both because I'm also a teacher. And teachers have to teach you guys the notation as well as the words. So I'm a lazy mathematician, but I'm also a really good teacher. See how I just played that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. We wrote some stuff down about dilations. It's time to review that. We know from our last lesson that a dilation is a transformation that produces scaled copies. What are some other things that we know about dilations? As you say the things, I will reveal them. What do we know, Emily? The angles are preserved. What does angles are preserved mean? Continue, Emily. It means they stay the same. They don't change. So if it was 90 degrees in the original, it's going to be 90 degrees when it's scaled up or scaled down. Um, what else do you know, Berkeley? Yeah, the side lengths are scaled up or down. We're multiplying them by a scale factor. So if they're scaled up, that means we're probably multiplying by a scale factor greater than 1. If they're scaling down, then they're multiplying by a scale factor less than 1. Let's keep going. Uh, what else do you know, Marley? Yep, since we're changing the size, that makes them non-congruent. They're scaled copies, but they are non-congruent figures. What else do you know, Liz? Yep. When we are doing a dilation, you have to tell me the center. We're going to be seeing that today. So whenever we're describing a dilation, you should be saying the center of dilation is, because that is a requirement. Um, what is the last thing that we have here, Andrew? It also requires a scale factor. So when you're describing that dilation, you'll say the center of dilation is blah, 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 and the scale factor is blah, blah, blah. We're going to put that to practice here. These directions, we're not going to do. We're going to do it a little bit differently. So you guys have attached to your papers this extra little page that says problem card one, and below it, it says problem card two. Let's focus on the top one, problem card one. Okay. You need to do the problem that it says. What does it say? Yep. Yeah. 
Exactly. Polygon AFID is dilated. You need to draw the image of AFID under the dilation. Do you have a polygon AFID on your grid? No. So you need to get it there. I'm the only one who has the answers. I'm the only one who knows how what the information you need. You need to politely ask me for that information. So you might start by saying, Mrs. Proctor, where is point A? Go ahead, ask me the question. Yes, Jackson. Point A is at, uh, oh, wrong one. Point A has the coordinates 0, 6. Did you hear that? I'll write it down just for this first one. Point A has coordinates 0, 6. So I, I'm going to find that point over 0, up 6, and I'm going to label it A. Okay, we know A. Do you have any more questions, or are you ready to do the problem now? Brian? Point B? Point B is at the origin, 0, 0. Good observation. So who has another question? Zachary? Yeah, F is probably a better question. Do you see that, Brian? We're not just going A, B, C, D. This polygon is A, F, I, D. F, are you listening? F has coordinates 6, 0. I'm not going to write that down for you. got to practice your listening skills. I'll say it again. F has coordinates 6, 0. Brian, you have another question? I has coordinates 0, negative 6. I'll repeat that. I has coordinates 0, comma, negative 6. Camry, do you have a question? D, point D has coordinates negative 6, comma, 0. Negative 6, comma, 0. Only one hand left. I'll answer that question. Katie, what's your question? I don't know. I, I actually don't have the image. I just have the points. So you, you be the judge of that. Uh, Andrew, you have a question? <gasps> that is a great question. Do you remember how when we're doing dilations, we need a center of dilation? So did you hear the question that Andrew asked me? Andrew asked, what is the center? I'll write this one down too. The center of dilation is the origin, 0, 0. Center of dilation is 0, 0. Are you guys ready to do this problem? Do you have any other questions then? Only Andrew has a question. Everybody should still be asking a question. What things do we need to describe a dilation? A center of dilation and a scale factor. So what question do you think Andrew is going to try and ask me next? What's a scale factor? Well, should you all have been ready to ask me, what is the scale factor, Mrs. Proctor? Andrew, go ahead. Ask me the question. The scale factor is one-third. Okay, any more questions? I don't see any more hands up. Can you do this problem now? Technically, you should be able to. If you are paying attention, you should be able to. We're going to pause the recording, give students a chance to work on this, just like you are going to work on this at home watching the video. Ready, set, go. Okay, based on what I told you earlier, we found A. I did that one together with you. F should have been placed here, 6, 0. I was 0, negative 6, so down here. And D was negative 6, 0. You get all your points in the right order. You're in the right places. Now, AFID, that means I go from A to F to I to, and then back to A, close it up. Okay, before you can even dilate it, you need to know what that figure is, right? Okay, now what's next? Center of dilation is 0, 0. And this is where I have to do this. Remember, as we saw in our last lesson, we know, and we also saw on our uh, first page here, we know that A prime is going to lie somewhere on the line that goes from the center through A. And F prime is going to be somewhere on that line that goes from the center to F. And the center to I, so that's probably a good idea to draw these first, right? 
And now that I've done that, where exactly is A? I know that A to the center has a distance of 6. But the scale factor is 1 -third. So it's 6 times 1 -third, Katie. 2. So that means what was 6 away is now going to be just 2 away. Here's what we did. In my calculator, I did 6 times the scale factor of 1 -third, which is equal to 2. So how far away is that going to be now? 2 away from the center instead of 6 away. So right here, I'm going to label that A prime. And we're going to follow that same process again and again and again. The center to F has a distance of 6. But that 6 needs to be multiplied by 1 -third, And 6 times 1 -third is equal to 2 again. So instead of being 6 away from the center, it's going to be just 2 away. 1, 2. And there is F prime. Keep going. From the center to I has a distance of 6. But I need to multiply that 6 by 1 -third, And I get 2. So instead of 6 away, it's 2 away. There's I prime. D was 6 away from the center. Now it's going to be just 2 away. There's D prime. And we're not done. We need to go from A prime to F prime to I prime to D prime, and then close it back up again. And there is AFID under dilation. How'd you guys do? Thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down. Okay, let's see how you do on the next one. Do you have some questions to ask me? Problem card two. Polygon ONPQ is dilated. Draw the image of ONPQ under this dilation. Please start us off, Brig. The coordinates of O are 0, 0. That one's an easy one, right? Coordinates of O are 0, 0. Cheyenne, you have a question? N has coordinates of 2, comma 2. 2, 2. Leah, you have a question? P has coordinates negative 4, comma 0. P has coordinates negative 4, comma 0. Brian? Point Q has coordinates 2, comma, negative 2. 2, comma, negative 2 is where you will find Q. You guys ready to do this problem? No, because what else do you need to ask? Emily, the scale factor for this problem is 3 halves. The scale factor, this is the one I will write down for you, the scale factor is 3 halves. Brian, the center of dilation, very good, great question. The center of dilation has coordinates negative 4, comma, 0. Huh, yeah, huh. Are you ready to do this one? Okay, we're going to pause the recording, give it a try. I told you where O, N, P, and Q are. We had questions, what's the scale factor? What's the center? See if you can get that finished up. We're going to pause the recording. Give it a try. Students in class struggled with this shape, so I'm going to put the shape up on the screen. O is 0, 0. N is 2, 2. P is negative 4, comma, 0. And Q is 2, negative 2. What, in, what sort of shape does this make? Well, we go from O to N. Because it says O, N, and P. P, Q. And back to O. Now that we have the correct shape, students are going to pause the, or students in class are going to work on that dilation. If you needed help with the shape, there it is. When I do a dilation, I need to go from the center through each point. The center is also point P. This is the center. So I know that N prime is going to be somewhere on the line that goes through P and N and beyond. 
You cannot skip this step. Get this done on your paper right now. You can't just watch me. You have to be doing this with me because you guys didn't do it before me. So you have to be doing it with me. And I see what you're raising your hand for. Is that better, Brian? Oh. Well, I am still moving on. Sorry, we're close to running out of time and I still need to finish up this recording. So we are going to continue. I know that O prime is going to be somewhere on the line that goes through the center and the point and beyond and P through Q and beyond. So where exactly is O prime going to be? How far away is O from the center currently? Far away, Mrs. Proctor. Yes. How far is it going to be after I dilate it? I'm going to take that distance of 4, multiply that by 3 halves, and I get, Miley, 6. So instead of being 4 away, it is going to be 6 away, and it still is going to be on that line. It's just instead of 4 away from the center, now it's 6 away. There's O prime. from P to N. That's on a diagonal, so it's a little bit more difficult to measure. But I know that I go up to and I go over 6. So when I go up to and then I need to multiply that by the scale factor, you have calculators. What do you get? Jerem. Yes, so instead of going up 2, I am now going to go up 3. And I went over 6, but now I'm going to take that 6 and I'm going to multiply it by the scale factor. And 6 times 3 halves, Emily, is 9. So instead of just going over 6, I'm going to go over 9. Look at that. I landed right there on the line just like I knew I would. That is going to be the point... N prime. You say yay and I say, <sighs> you're killing me smalls. <laughs> exactly, Emily. P to Q is down two, which I already know, multiplied by three halves, that's going to be down three. It's over six, and instead of six, six multiplied by three halves is over. Nine. Boom. Right there. There's Q prime. Our new figure goes from P to N prime to O prime to Q prime and back to P. Why did P not change? Why didn't P change? Leah? Yeah, because it's the center. It's the center of dilation. It's a point on the figure, but it's also the center. Everything expands and contracts from that point. All right, let's go through this are you ready for more quickly. It's not a main part of this lesson, but it is something interesting to think about. Here we can see that triangle EFG was um, created using triangle ABC and a scale factor of 2. So that means to go from ABC to EFG, we multiplied everything by 2. Um, we also used D as that center of dilation. We can also see that triangle HIJ was created using ABC, uh, center D, and scale factor of 1 half. So everything was multiplied by 1 half. It's half the size of triangle ABC. So the question is, we can see that when things are getting bigger, we're multiplying by a number greater than 1. When things are getting smaller, we're multiplying by a number that's less than 1, like a fraction. <clears throat> What if that scale factor was zero? What is going to happen? So again, this side length here is doubled to go to this triangle because we multiplied by two. See that? Here we can see that it is half the size. If we go from here to here, it's half the size. What's going to happen if I take this triangle and use a scale factor of zero? What is going to happen? What's going to happen is all those side lengths are going to be multiplied by zero, which means they don't exist. 
and that whole triangle would kind of be squished down to just that single point. The triangle wouldn't really exist. The next question, what would the image of the triangle look like under dilation with scale factor of negative one? Think about what's happening. What if it's not just a fraction, not zero, but what happens if it's negative one? If possible, then draw it. This is a really, really interesting situation, and I want to kind of review one of these concepts that we've talked about. Notice that A, E, and H are all on the same line that goes through that center of dilation. But if I extend that beyond that center of dilation, you can see that that line is already drawn. See? So all of these lines that are over here on the left-hand side, notice that they're just extensions of these other ones. So I'm not going to take the time to draw all of them. But do notice A, E, H, D are all on the same line that continues on back here. So if we could dilate with a scale factor of negative one, where would point A end up? follow it back and it's going to end up, I'm just estimating this is not perfect, but it's going to be about here. And B, if we keep on going, B and E and I, they're all on this line. If I keep on going back, there would be zero. If I keep going back, 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 that is going to be, and again, I'm just estimating this is not going to be perfect. It's going to be roughly here. That is where B prime would be. And keep on going with that. Here's uh, C and G and J all on that same line. Here it is when it's twice as big, regular size, half the size, zero. And if I were to keep on going back, that would be somewhere. Again, these are just estimates. I'm going to say right around here-ish. That would be the C prime. So if we could dilate with scale factor of negative one, it would look something kind of like this. And notice what happened. Oh, this is not a very good drawing of it. Notice what's happened. I'm going to make some adjustments here. That's a little bit better. That triangle flipped upside down. What was A on the top is now A prime on the bottom because I just followed that same line. And what was C on the bottom is now C prime on the top because I just followed that same line going backwards into the negative area. Um, all right, that is, that's enough for that. Are you ready for more? Let's move on to the summary. One important use of coordinates is to communicate geometric information precisely. That's why we asked for where those points were. We needed those coordinates. Um, so in order to perform a dilation of A, B, C, D, the first thing I would need to know is where's A, B, C, and D? Just like I had you ask those questions first. The next thing I need is I need to know the center of dilation. Whenever we're talking about dilations, we need to know the center of dilation. And the final thing we need to know the scale factor. That's why I had you ask those questions. Once we have all of those pieces of information, we can use that to perform our dilation. Here is the cool down. It tells us that the smaller triangle was created um, from the larger triangle. I'm sorry, the smaller triangle was the original. It was dilated to create the larger triangle. The center of dilation is plotted, but it is not labeled. So we can see there's an extra point here that's plotted. It's not labeled. That is the center of dilation. Describe the dilation. So remember, when we describe the dilation, even though we probably ought to describe all of the points, I just want to focus on the pieces that we normally need, which is where is the center of dilation? And what is the scale factor? So that center is already plotted. Remember, even if it weren't plotted, we could go from this point to its corresponding and extend it even further. We could go from here to its corresponding point and extend it even further. And from here to its corresponding and extend it. And we can see that all of those are intersecting right here at that point, which was plotted. Now we need to define it. What is that center of dilation? It has the coordinates of three comma zero. What is the scale factor? the best way to determine the scale factor is to determine distances. Since all of these side lengths in the triangles are at angles, they're diagonals, it's really, really hard to measure those diagonals. So instead, I want to focus on one point that's easy to measure. What is the distance from the center of dilation to this point here? How far away are those points? 
we can see that that's just one away. But when this point is dilated, it becomes this point here. So that distance went from 1 to a distance of 3. How does it go from a distance of 1 to a distance of 3? What is that scale factor? What must we be multiplying by? That would be 3. So the scale factor of this dilation was 3. Uh, that's it for today's lesson. Your homework is the Lesson 5 Practice Problems. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.